by definition, urinary tract infections usually mean that we're dealing with a bacterial situation. Uh, there are other things that could conceivably do this, in, including you know, fungi and viral infections, but they're far less common. So what we're usually talking about is bacteria that have set up housekeeping in places that they shouldn't be. The urine that is collected anywhere from the kidney, the renal pelvis, the ureter, the bladder, all the way down to the proximal urethra should be sterile. The problems we get into are when urine traverses the distal urethra, it can pick up flora from that area, and you can think that they have an infection when they indeed do not. And this becomes a problem when you collect urine by catheterization or from voiding. The infection, once they set up housekeeping, could be quite superficial along the mucosa. That's easier to treat than when it's deeper inside the tissues. Those are more difficult uh, to eradicate. It's been estimated that about 14% of dogs will have a urinary tract infection during their lifetime. If you're diagnosing urinary tract infections in cats a lot, you're wrong most of the time, particularly if the cat is less than 10 years of age and has concentrated urine. Most of the time when you diagnose urinary tract infections, it's going to be with a gram-negative organism, uh, about 75% of the time in most of our studies. 25% will be gram-positive. And in primary care practices, you'll usually only be dealing with one organism. In my kind of practice, a tertiary referral practice, sometimes we have two or three organisms, but hopefully you won't have to deal with that, uh, at least not very commonly. <clears throat> This is some results that we published a, a couple of years ago, uh, and you can see that about 90% of the, of the dogs that had urinary tract infection in our study had one bug, and 10% of them had two isolates, which goes along with the, most of the conventional reports and thinking. E. coli usually predominates as the cause of uh, urinary tract infections in, in most series, uh, over half in both uh, primary care and in referral situations. If you can deal with E. coli, staph, and proteus, you'll be able to deal with over 85% of the organisms that are causing uh, urinary tract infections. E. coli, some staph, strep, and proteus are able to invade into the urinary tract despite reasonably good host defenses. So they can actually create a primary uh, urinary tract infection. Other bugs like Pseudomonas or Enrobacter need additional help to get in there, oftentimes some immunosuppression, some surgical in intervention, something that is suppressing the immune system. Long-term antibiotics, things like steroids, uh, help those bugs out quite a bit. Where do these organisms come from? Uh, we think that, that most of certainly the E. coli uh, comes from the dog's own intestinal flora and contaminates the system. We'll go through that in just a little bit. It can also come from the distal urethral flora. Uh, flora from the skin occasionally does ascend. Uh, probably the worst type of infection that could be acquired would be one that you picked up in your hospital uh, following passing a, a urinary catheter. Those bugs are likely to be extremely uh, resistant. So this is a scenario on this slide how we think it happens. Something like an E. coli contaminates the perineum that sets up a little housekeeping there. As it increases number, it eventually will uh, ascend up through the vulva or perhaps uh, up the previous, ascend into the urethra and then into the bladder. And we worry about uh, bugs that have set up housekeeping in the bladder because they could uh, go up the ureters and they can use Brownian motion to go against the flow of downhill urine and eventually could make it up into the kidney and may, may cross into uh, the, the kidney parenchyma and create a pyelonephritis. <clears throat> 